Welcome back to Learn SKN, and today we have the May June 2022 CSEC Economics Paper 2. So, we're going to look at the Paper 2 for Economics for May June 2022. So, today we're looking at question number one. Before we jump into it, make sure you click the link in, in the description below if you want to access the free pass papers for economics and also if you want to access the multiple choice booklet that was created with five years of past papers and the solutions in the back so that's in the description below so let's look at number one today we're jumping in both feet first all right number one list the three main agents in an economy and so just wanted to list not explain yet so what are the three agents in the economy that's the household the firm and the government right so you have it right here the household the firm and the government those are the three main agents in an economy number one two state the role of each agent listed in one above okay so we know we have to delve a little deeper okay so the household now the household their job their role is to provide the factors of production to the firm they are the ones who provide the resources such as labor cap capital all those factors of, factors of production the household provides that to the firm the factors of production are land labor capital entrepreneurship and of course you can look at the video on that for a more in-depth uh dive but they're asking us to just define just to say what they do just, just say the function of this the role of each and the household's job is to provide the factors of production to the market to the firm to the government of course the function of the firm the role of the firm is to make the goods and service that we produce we consume so the main role of the firm is to provide produce the goods and services that the household will consume because all of the goods or service that we consume is produced by a business in a sense right so that's the role of the firm of course the government now their role is to build out that framework with the rules and laws and regulations that everything else works within so the household will live within that framework of laws and regulations and the firm operates within that framework of laws and regulations that is put in place and upheld by the government that's the government also as i say here is involved in some production because the you know, government has businesses and they provide goods and services also but one of the main roles is putting that framework in place for the with rules and regulations and laws that the firm would operate in and we would live in so that's the answer for that part of number one so that's three max right? so far so good we're moving nice all right number one b one explain how scarcity creates the economic problem so what is the economic problem the economic problem is really that as humans our wants they are unlimited we got wants can done wants up the razo then we want 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 everything right you know that song want 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 so we want everything it's unlimited but our resources like money and those things that is limited right wants are infinite and money and resources they're finite they can done they have an end and so that what that's what creates the economic problem and that is how scarcity comes about because of the fact that wants are unlimited but resources are limited that's how we end up with scarcity because now we have to look into prioritizing what we want and that kind of thing we can't we can get enough money to buy everything that we want so even if we jump in our textbook they're talking about scarcity here they say scarcity is the economic condition where all resources and goods and services though they may be plentiful are not sufficient for all of those who desire them so even though there's a lot of stuff out there all we, we can satisfy all of our wants still you can't buy up everything and think that there's just not enough to go around and so because there's not enough to go around there exists scarcity right so we are looking at it in the 
we are looking on both levels the fact that yes literally something's just scarce as in can this may be seasonal and so they're not in so the scarce but we're talking about the world population is about nine billion by now right eight billion nine billion we don't have enough resources to feed uh for that amount of people and so for some of us scarcity something in food some people go hungry they are food insecure and so for us uh scarcity exists all right just to finish off the discussion look at that scarcity exists for all groups in the economy for example a household might want to buy a microwave oven and a toaster oven but have limited savings and so now we have to choose you can't just buy everything you have to choose so that's that answers that question right the simple fact that we want a lot of things but resources are limited that creates the economic problem of scarcity because all the goods and services out there they can done they're not available they're not available to everybody at the same level all right number two differentiate between opportunity costs and money costs so i guess by just definition alone you will understand what these two are so opportunity cost is the cost of giving up something for something else the cost you gave up for something in order to obtain something else so it's not literally a monetary cost most times for example if i go to a restaurant and i see on the menu you have a hamburger and then you have a chicken pasta if i decide to eat it buy the hamburger because i only have ten dollars and both of the, both of them cost ten dollars and i decide to buy the hamburger my opportunity cost really is giving up that chicken pasta the taste of that creamy alfredo that chicken pasta that's the opportunity cost where you gave up to get something else and of course money cost is when there's a monetary value attached to something when there's a monetary value attached to a good or service that you have to pay to obtain that good or service that's the monetary that's the money cost right there right so that's the, the money cost is more literal is actually the amount of money you spend to obtain something you buy something for twenty dollars that's the monetary cost that's the money cost but opportunity cost now yes you have two things both cost 20 Yes, I spend the money on one, but the opportunity cost is what I gave up to buy that one. So whatever the other option was, that's the cost of getting what I want now. So that would give you four max if you define both of them. All right, rolling along nicely again, swimmingly. Use a label diagram of the production possibility frontier. Explain the concept of opportunity cost as production moves along the frontier. All right, that's the last question for number one. So you have to get your graph out to get this one done. So they're testing you on multiple things right now. If you know what the production possibility frontier is, a PPF, that's one. If you know how to draw it and label it. And then two, if you understand what it is saying. And how can you pick out the opportunity cost being explained in that diagram. So let's run through it quickly. All right, so return to our textbook. We can see the production possibility curve being expressed here, being graphically. So what is it exactly? So something like this, to get your full marks, of course, we define what a production possibility frontier is. You define it, and then you draw it, and then explain exactly what they ask for. So it's a graph showing the various combination of two goods that an economy is able to produce with a fixed resource, with, with fixed resources. So they're saying that the economy has a set amount of resources, and these are the various combination of goods of two goods that that economy can produce given those fixed resources and so the production possibility curve represents the fixed resources that's all the line is the maximum that you can produce and if you look at the the graph here and the the schedule over here we can see what's happening so they're saying here this country this economy can produce just two things watermelons and wafers and so we're looking at opportunity cost and remember opportunity cost is the cost of giving up one thing to obtain another and so in this case we're looking at watermelons and wafers we're saying the economy only has 100 units of resources 100 that's it 100 unit of resources and you have to create these goods these watermelons are wafers so what can happen in the economy they can choose to produce all watermelons 
But what is the cost of producing 100 watermelons? The cost is zero wafers. You cannot produce any wafers if you're going to spend all the resources to produce watermelons. Now, you can produce 95 watermelons and 20 wafers now. So, the cost of producing 20 wafers is you have to give up 5 watermelon. Because you realize as you're moving, point B moving down, down the curve. So, to move from point A to point B, you have to give up 5 watermelons and then take the rest of the resources to create 20 wafers. So that's opportunity cost right there. You have to give up 5 watermelons to get 20 wafers. So the cost of 20 wafers is foregoing producing 5 additional watermelons. So in essence, the cost of the 20 wafers is giving up 5 watermelons. That's how opportunity cost works on the production possibility frontier. And as you keep moving down the curve, you'd realize that you're giving up more watermelons to produce more wafers. So at point C, we're down to 85 now. So we're giving up an additional 10 watermelons to produce 40 wafers, so 20 more wafers now. And to do that, we are giving up again. So you have to give up watermelons to get wafers. That's the whole point of opportunity cost on the com production possibility frontier in production you have to give up something to get something so you have to give up to get so we're giving up watermelon to produce wafers so the opportunity cost exists where you have to give up the wafer i mean the, the, the watermelon to get the wafers so again go back to the first one point to move from point a to point b we gave up five watermelons to get 20 wafers and so the opportunity cost of producing 20 wafers is giving up five watermelons and so that's what they're asking us to explain in this question make sure you draw a nice graph and everything and you'll be able to get your correct max so this is how the graph looks right here make sure you draw your x and y axis you, you don't even have to name the products you can put product a product product a product b you can put um whatever you want to call them z and x whatever right you don't have to name them, but it'd be good to, to name them in your explanation. And then you put the different points along the production possibility frontier. And now you explain that as you move to the right from watermelons to wafers, whatever you want to call them, you have to give up something to get something. So you have to give up some watermelon to get wafers. And as you go more, you're giving up more and more and more till you reach all the way to point F, where you give up all the watermelons to produce. 100 wafers and so the opportunity cost of producing 100 wafers is 100 watermelons you give up all the watermelons right so that's what the explanation is going to look like all right we can also use this graph this powerpoint to show how it is conducted it is constructed so we have right here movement we have the, the axis as i said before zero x-axis y-axis and then you start drawing the curve put in your points we're not worrying about what's inside or outside we're looking at what's on the the curve so we're looking at a and c right there and as you can see go back one in order to produce at point a you had to give up 200 of c right of sorry of computers to produce a point a which is cars you had to give up 200 computers to get the additional 100 cars right so just how to draw it all right folks that's it for this paper well not the paper but that's it for question one of this paper so if you want to see the rest questions answered subscribe to the channel so that you can know when and of course hit the notification so you know when the videos are uploaded and and we're going to go on to number two three four and to the end so stay tuned to learn SKN and check out the description to see if you want to download this 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 past paper and others for free or if you want to purchase the multiple choice booklet on the learn SKN uh, website all right so that's it for now meet you back here for the next question on this May June 2022 paper 2 CISEC economics